Thank you. I'm going to hand this over to you. So, so Pranav, uh, Credit Suisse, huge global financial services organization, one of Fortune Magazine's most admired companies. Uh, you're in the asset management organization. So tell us a little bit about what that is and what you do there. Sure, I'll just give you a little context on Credit Suisse. So we're about 162 years old. We operate in about 50 different countries. We have 46,000 employees, and we come from 117 nations, and we manage about $1.3 trillion in assets, right? So that's who we are. And uh, about three years ago, we went through some major restructuring, and Credit Suisse is really about five parts, right? So we have the Swiss Universal Bank, we have the Asia Pacific Bank, we have uh, international wealth management, we have investment banking and capital markets and global markets. So uh, we really service our clients through the Swiss Universal Bank, the Asia Pacific Bank, and international wealth management. Um, and the other two units really support these functions. So I come from asset management, and asset management is a part of international wealth management. So asset management itself operates in about 21 different countries, and uh, we have, I think, close to about $400 billion in assets under management. So that's who we are. Okay, yeah. cool. And, and within asset management, when you're facing IT challenges, how do you approach them? Is it, is it IT driving the business? Is it the business driving IT? What, what's the approach? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the industry at large, the financial services, right, one way to kind of classify it is the buy side and the sell side. So depending on whether you're on the buy side or the sell side, the culture shifts dramatically within the bank. And the amount of investment available to your IT organization changes significantly. So asset management, I see it more as a buy-side organization, at least the way I've experienced asset management. Um, and, and so therefore, you know, it shifts the whole culture about how IT is viewed. So in the buy-side organization, why, you know, we've been through a whole iteration of building your own systems, building your own trading systems, accounting systems, and then you get to a point of scale where, like, why don't I just go and buy this? Yeah. Why build a trading system when I can buy one? Why build an accounting system when I can buy one? Uh, and so we're now, I think, around 10 years down the road where you realize, well, if I can buy it, anybody else can buy it. Yeah. Right? So there's no real differentiation in buying a product, such as a trading system or an accounting system. So then what differentiates you? So we're now at that juncture where we're saying, okay, what do we do now as IT to really differentiate our business? And historically, me, I, the way I've kind of been managing my own career is really just giving business what they ask for. And we're seen as an enabler, and we've never really differentiated the business where we came from. And that's how we've been. But now I think we're at a point where, like, okay, all the competitors have the exact same products. What do we do next? Right. So I think we, as IT, at least me as a person, as an individual, I'm thinking, oh, it's, it's my personal responsibility to really go and disrupt or innovate my own business model. It's, I shouldn't just leave it to my business. So I think it's historically been a business-driven thing. Right. But now it's turning into an IT thing. But I'm also very fortunate because my business stakeholders happen to be extremely progressive very innovative. So they always keep me at the edge of my seat, uh, of my seat right? So it's, it's like I'm trying to play catch up to the vision. So it's also a good place to be. So you have it going both ways. You're trying to find IT approaches to differentiate the business, and the business itself is pushing you to drive forward. Exactly. That's cool. So um, when you're introducing a new technology like MarkLogic, something that, you know, is, as I said, it's not the way things were, have been done for the past 30 years. In, in the financial services industry in general and, and in your organization, w what is it like to do that? What are, what are kind of the, the cultural and people-related things that you have to deal with to make a shift like that? Sure, I think it'll just, uh, um, so I really think it's, you know, we're trying to secure data in an insecure world. That's how I see it, right? To answer your question, I mean, we have, normally when we select products and technologies like MarkLogic, we talk about a use case, you bring the right tool into the organization, and then there's an outcome because of this particular uh, tool. Right. And MarkLogic obviously offers a lot of benefits in that space. And this is a very technical conversation, and I'm going to talk about everything about the technical piece, right? So uh, to me, it's really three things that lead to an outcome, right? So there's people, processes, and tools. You have the wrong people, you're, the most sophisticated tool doesn't work. You have bad processes, your tools don't work. So it's right. a whole trifecta there, or a bad tool with great people doesn't work. So to me, that's really uh, uh, the, the, full, the full triangle of success, right? But to, what I'm most interested in is the culture, because culture really impacts technology. Like I was saying, you could come from the buy side or sell side and you have a different viewpoint. That's one way to look at it. And the other thing is the, the industry, right? Uh, the industry right now, if you see financial services, 
we're clearly on the cusp of an, of an innovation or a disruption, right. be it from the fintech world or somewhere else. Um, I come from a business line that's also very profitable. So when things are profitable, you don't really care. So, you know, it, it's fine. It's going right. well. We have a lot of manual processes. And we've been successful for 162 years. So why not, right? Uh, the other thing is uh, the roles within an organization. You have various roles. You have auditors, regulators, traders, portfolio managers, accountants. Uh, no, accountants. So all of them have vested interests right, uh, in performing their roles really well. So that's one aspect which really makes a product like MarkLogic. You, know, you can bring a great product like MarkLogic in, but you really have to tackle that. Right? And then you take, talk about location. We have a very rich ecosystem of vendors. So they have the, the vendors have the location strategies. We have our location strategies in terms of where we keep our employees and consultants. So if I go to certain markets, like the Swiss market where I'm in right now, it, you, you have certain skill sets and you don't have certain skill sets. So if I'm bringing in a product, I want something that's fairly generic. I don't want something so specific as a skill that I can operate out of a low-cost location. Right. Right, because when you go to certain low-cost locations, you get generic skill sets. So I want to be able to use XQuery because a lot of my .NET programmers know XML. I want to be able to use uh, jQuery because I have a lot of UI developers who understand JSON, right? right. right. Um, I have a lot of SQL programmers, so they need a shot at this. Right. Some people want to go to Sparkle. So, and I don't want to buy five or six different products to do all of this. Right. I come from the buy side. Give it to me all in one place. Yeah. Right? So that's really what this is. Uh, the next one is actually my favorite, politics. I have been <laughs> guilty about this in a previous life in previous banks where politics is built into architecture. Right? It is so prevalent. Because, and it, it's all for the good intention, but there is, you have to address the human element of vulnerability. Right? You do want to protect data. I used to think as long as I owned a system in, in a company, I had a career. But uh, now I know I need to have data in the system. Yeah. So, right? so, <laughs> so data, the way you historically executed the, these roles was you have a SQL database. I'm just going to make another SQL database, copy all the data into mine, and do whatever I want with it. Right. Can't afford to do that with MacLogic because it is about integrating silos. And um, it's, I mean, you, you can't keep repeating MacLogic installations that are identical to each other through other companies. It kind of blows the whole purpose. Right. right? So to me, um, Addressing that psychology, the human psychology of data is so critical because you have all these features within MarkLogic, you know. So, for example, element level security. Oh, there's a whole new way of defining security and what it means to have data ownership. So you can have a shared infrastructure, and now I can define security models in a way where different groups within the organization can have access to their own data, but we still have one copy of the data. I don't have to make copies. Right. Right? So the whole... Uh, I want to say, uh, the pissing war of data, right? It's, it's really like, hey, this is mine. So to me, how do you kind of define that in MarkLogic? I think you have some new paradigms available within a system, a product like MarkLogic. Yeah. Uh, how does um, by temporality or um, you know, other features like redaction, how, how can I answer a regulator now? It completely changes the conversation. Right. Right. So I'm pretty sure we have sophisticated things that you can do within MarkLogic in, in the technical domain. But in the domain of the organization psychology, this is what I'm more interested in, because this can completely sink the most sophisticated solution. Right. So that's what we're tackling within our organization. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Gary was talking about uh, the mind shift. And I think that's really what you're expressing, too, is there needs to be a mind shift and a culture shift to really get the benefit of all these technologies as well. Exactly. And mind shift, you know what? If you have executive leverage over your organization, you can just mandate it and it happens. It's the easy one, right? Right. But what if you want to do it across multiple groups? Now right. you need buy-in, and getting buy-in is pretty hard. So um, I think of it as really accountability and control. People want to have accountability in their roles, and they want to have control over certain things. Right? And you really land up in two different places. You either get complete buy-in and people are happy, or you don't get any buy-in and people are unhappy. Right? At least this is a black and white thing where you know whether your sophisticated solution is going to gain adoption. Right. But as we started moving through a project, we realized it's like a third more dangerous state which is they act like they don't know what hit them. <laughs> so this is like, we talked about the innovation, we talked about the vision, and you start realizing that innovation, vision, transformation, disruption, it's all great as long as it's in the future. Right, right, right. <laughs> I love that. Right? Yeah. So this is where we are. We're like in this whole big gray area of, oh my God, what are you gonna, my data is going away? Yeah. Right? Or I don't have full control. So. Uh, I, my mess, I, I would just have one request. If you're a technical person in this room and you're, you're going to be doing something great in this conference, 
think about the human psychology of it. Uh, you can have the most sophisticated solution. You'll get nowhere without buy-in. And your success is an agreement reality anyway. We all have to agree that we're successful. And if I'm vulnerable about something or insecure about something, I'm just going to say you know, it wasn't successful. So you had the most, another way of saying it, a fool with a tool is still a fool, right? Yeah. So it's just, to me, that's this human psychology, uh, the organizational psychology is what we have to solve as part of our architecture for a great product like MarkLogic to work. That's great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. And